Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be looking at a two-dimensional kinematic problem. In this case, Sally rolls a coin off of her 10-meter high roof with a horizontal velocity of 2 meters per second. How far from the house does her coin land? And I want to know what is the final velocity before impact. You know, really what we're trying to see is almost every single variable I want to find out. I want to find out the initial velocity, the final velocity, the acceleration time, displacement, and the impact velocity for my, uh, my y direction and also my x direction. Now bear in mind this is two-dimensional kinematics. So we're talking about uh, rolling a coin, and we can almost say this, this chart here is the coin, uh, the roof, and we're rolling a coin off the roof. Now, I want you to check this out, guys. At this point, when you're rolling the coin off the roof, there is a force gravity downward, and it's being balanced out by a force. So what we have is balanced forces, and balanced forces means no acceleration. So this, this coin is rolling off the roof at 2 meters per second going this way. And the second it hits that point, the second it hits that point, it changes direction. Now we know that... Uh, Newton's first uh, law of motion simply says that an object will continue in a straight line fashion, straight line fashion, until acted on by an unbalanced force. And in this case, we start seeing a direction change. So we know there must be an unbalanced force. And what happens is that the rooftop is no longer exerting a normal force. Therefore, once this thing starts falling, it'll be under the sole influence of gravity. And there's not another force to balance it out going upwards as there was in the past. So we're seeing a change in direction. All right, that's a direct consequence of Newton's first law. Object will continue in a straight line motion until acted upon by an unbalanced force. In this case, the unbalanced force was gravity. Beforehand, it was balanced out by the normal. If we're looking at the givens here, we have a 10 meter high roof. And we can label that right down here as the 10 meter high roof. We'll label it right there. We note that it has a horizontal velocity of 2 meters per second. So that's an initial velocity of horizontally of 2 meters per second. We'll plug that in there in a second. We want to find out how far it lands and what is the final velocity before impact. But really what I want to find out is everything in here. All right, guys, those are the two givens the problem has. And we're going to take time now to fill out this chart um, for the motion going downward and also the motion going outward. So I'm going to label this as 10 meters. That's my rooftop. It's a negative 10 meters. And I know I'm traveling at 2 meters per second, horizontal velocity. And because there is no acceleration horizontally, that's also going to be my final velocity. I'm traveling horizontally with a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. Horizontally, there is balanced forces. There are no forces acting on the object, either leftward or rightward. So therefore, I have balanced forces, and it's going to be a 0 meters per second squared acceleration. My initial velocity going downward, well, I actually did not have any when I first started. I was going horizontally off the table, and then, off a roof, rather, and then I, um, I started going downward, and that's when I have zero meters per second as my downward uh, initial velocity. Eventually, when I strike the ground, it will have a final velocity. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a given. Any object that's falling on Earth will fall and accelerate at the rate of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to go through this problem now and start to find the time or the final velocity that the object is traveling at. We're going to need both of them to solve this problem. So let's start off by looking at time. In order to find the time, we're going to use the equation the displacement equals initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. So let's plug these variables in that we know. So we know that this thing is going negative 10 meters. We know the initial downward velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. And it's going to be multiplied by the time. In this case, the time is something we're trying to solve for, so we don't know what it is. Let's multiply, uh, add that by 1 half at squared. Acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared and once again here is the variable we're looking for now right off the bat you're gonna see that this section right here is gonna be a zero multiplied by a time and because that's the case the value for these two will be zero so what I'm gonna do is therefore just remove this portion from the problem and now what I see is that displacement is going to be equal to one-half at squared and now I could actually start isolating and solving 
for the variable time. All right, guys, let's rearrange this problem algebraically to make it time equals. So negative 20 meters equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by time squared. Let's continue to isolate and solve for t. So we have negative 20 divided by negative 9.8. And that's going to equal to 2.04 seconds squared equals t squared. And so we need now to take the square root of 2.04 to find out how long this thing has been in the air for. And we find out that time is going to be equal to 1.43 seconds. All right, guys, so if time is equal to 1.43 seconds, that is how long this thing is in the air for from top to bottom until it strikes the ground is 1.4 three seconds. Now that is going to be the same amount of time that this object is traveling horizontally as well. That's going to be 1.43 seconds going that way. Alright dudes, so we got that down. Time is going to be solved for now. Now we can actually go ahead and find the final velocity of this object is traveling in the downward direction. Now bear in mind, this object is actually traveling horizontally and it is also traveling down at the same time and is having this kind of a motion going down like this. So it definitely has a horizontal component to it and a vertical component. And right now we're going to solve for the vertical final velocity. And we're going to use the equation. So now let's solve, guys, for how fast this object is moving downward right before impact. So we're looking at this component of my velocity. So my final velocity in the y direction is going to be equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Vfy equals initial velocity, which was 0 meters per second in the y direction, plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by the time, and the time was 1.43 seconds. So let's solve for this, guys. Vfy is going to be equal to 14.0 meters per second, and that's going to be the negative or the downward direction. And we're going to label that in our chart over here. Okay, guys, last up is how far this object has gone horizontally. I'm looking for my, my displacement now, horizontally. So this object is traveling at 2 meters per second as it leaves this rooftop. So it's going horizontally 2 meters per second. Now let's solve for that. Let's pick a kinematic equation that's going to give us that. And I'm going to use my displacement horizontally is going to be equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. And the cool thing with the horizontal motion is that because it has no acceleration, I'm not going to use this back half of the equation. And really it's going to be displacement equals initial velocity times time. And you could probably, um, you know, make a simple calculation here. dx equals initial velocity of 2 meters per second multiplied by the time, and the time was 1.43 seconds. And we find out that the displacement is going to be equal to 2.86 meters horizontally. And that was a pretty easy one for us. All right, guys, so what we got here so far is that the object has moved horizontally 2.86 meters in the amount of time that it was falling down. So it actually landed 2.86 meters away from the rooftop, and it took 1.43 seconds. Lastly, let's solve for the impact velocity. The impact velocity is going to be a combination of my x velocity and my y velocity. And what we're going to do is kind of make this a triangle. And we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to solve it. This object is traveling horizontally with a velocity of 2 meters per second. And it's also traveling downward because it's going down at the same time. And it's traveling downward at negative 14 meters per second upon impact. And so really, we're looking at this. What is the resultant velocity 
of 2 meters per second and 14 meters per second. And I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem for that. So my, my V impact is really going to be VI squared equals 2 meters per second squared. It's Pythagorean theorem here plus a negative 14 squared. All right, guys, let's crunch the numbers, and what we're going to get here is the VI is going to be equal to, VI squared is going to be equal to 200 meters squared, second squared, and finally, the impact velocity will be the square root of 200, which is going to be 14.1 meters per second. Alright guys, that solves our video for tonight. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Hopefully it was helpful. Have a good day.